capital for people, not least parents, to appreciate because of the goal that it has and indeed has to a large extent achieved of programming and conditioning the minds of young people and children so they become the adults that suit the system in future generations of people in the workplace. What's kind of prompted me to do this subject this week is the announcement by the British government, but it's something you find all around the world, this theme, including the United States. The stated intention of the British government to extend the school day. Just look at it, step by step by step, the totalitarian tiptoe, as I call it, and you'll see how more and more of a child's time is controlled by the state and how parental power and influence is being eroded at the same speed. We are seeing the minds of children hijacked by the state in multiple ways that I'll be describing. And these plans, which also include a, a guy from this um, British education government watchdog called Ofsted, calling for children to go to school at two. I mean, we're on the road to, to, to children coming out of the womb and, and, and going straight into the class. Oh, we got one coming out now. Here you go, here you go, here you go. Gotcha. Okay, class 1A, algebra. Tell him what X equals. Madness! And we're only where we are now. We are not where this is planned to go. And you can't divorce what's happening in so-called education in terms of uh, control uh, of, of children by the state and the way the state's social services around the world are taking on a more and more industrial scale children from loving parents for the most spurious, outrageous reasons they make them up and handing them to control of the state. These things are all connected because what we're looking at is the end of parenthood which is what Aldous Huxley was talking about in Brave New World, published back in the 1930s, but not as the novel it's said to be, but more the blueprint from insider knowledge of where it was meant to go. And that is where we're going now, quicker and quicker. Now, um, I quote in my new book, Phantom Self, uh, on a, a kind of range of subjects, a Rockefeller family insider um, who was speaking in 1969 to a group of doctors, and one of them um, explained later what he'd said that night. And what he said was how the world was going to change because it's all planned to change that way. And it is in extraordinary detail the world we see now and the world that's coming so fast unless we part the arse from the sofa. 
And what he said, he said a number of things about education. And among them was that children would spend more time in school, yeah, but they wouldn't learn anything. And what he meant was they wouldn't learn anything that they needed to know. They would simply, in my words, download their perceptions from the state to suit the state. He talked about education being used to control who had access to information and that schools would become what he called the hub of the community. And that means, in truth, that schools would become, certainly in the first stage of this sequence, the new parents. And look at how uh, more and more uh, dictatorial powers um, expressed by dictatorial people, often called head teachers, etc., that are being um, used by the state to dictate to parents and dictate to children. And more and more, not even dictate to them only through the school day, but, but what they do afterwards. I'll get into that um, later on. And this programming, because what schools are, are programming prisons. And the idea is to use it as a sausage machine conveyor belt to take children from the earliest age and program their perceptions for life, perceptions that suit the state and the need and desire for mass control. And that means destroying spontaneity, destroying free thought, destroying um, the ability to look at a situation and see how dots connect. And like I say, it's working. Uh, this is a study by the uh, Professor of Education at the College of William and Mary in Virginia, and it involves school-aged children between uh, kindergarten and uh, through to 12th grade. And this is what they found happened in the period in between. A massive decline of creativity as, quote, children became less emotionally expressive, less energetic, less talkative and verbally expressive, less humorous, led, less imaginative, um, less unconventional. All the words that the state requires uh, minds to be if it's going to control people en masse. Less lively and passionate, less perceptive, less apt to connect seemingly irrelevant things, connecting dots so you see the picture. Uh, less synthesizing and less likely to see things from a different angle. Precisely. To see things in a barely one-dimensional way that this is how it is and there's no other possibilities. Because that's what the state wants. Schools are programming prisons for children. And, you know, when, uh, you know, parents say, oh, they care for their kids and they love their kids, and I'm sure, I'm sure they do in that way. But if parents want the best for their children and they want their children to express their true uniqueness and true potential for creativity and express the gifts that they have, which may not often involve passing ludicrous exams, then they need to get involved in what's going on. They need to see what's going on. They need to think what's happening when I drop my child off at school until I pick them up again. What's going on in there? How are, 
how is my how is my child being educated as against simply programmed with the state's version of everything so uh, if we look um at the definitions of programming and prison programming um, is one to insert or encode specific operating instructions into a machine or apparatus they want children to be turned into machines is the whole point of it to insert instructions into a machine or apparatus to cause to absorb or incorporate automatic responses attitudes or the like to condition my goodness me is that education uh, uh, in one sentence or what is claimed to be education to set regulate or modify uh, so as to produce a specific response or reaction and that's what so called education is doing it's um conditioning children to set regulate or modify so as to produce a specific response or reaction i e see the world the way that suits the state and then we go on to the definition of prison any place of confinement or involuntary restraint well it's confinement because children are told when they have to be there when they can leave and it's involuntary restraint because how many kids want to spend virtually their entire formative years in a school being told what to do and what not to do when to speak and when not to speak when they can go to the toilet when they can't think about it this is what's going on oh my, my children go to a good prison now and the idea um to extend the school day which is this theme around the world certainly uh, in britain uh, very recently is simply to well to do the two things to extend the time each day when this programming can go on and of course the teachers and ed teachers the vast vast overwhelming majority almost all of them have no idea because they've been through the same system and downloaded the same program they've no idea that they are programmed programmers being used to program the next generation and of course one of the things that um uh has been announced with this extension of the school day is that all schools in this country are going to become uh, what they call academies which is just a fancy way of saying we're moving towards the privatization of education because the idea is for corporations to run everything including these prisons of the mind and not only do we have these long long school days we have homework for many kids piles of it so when they leave the prison the prison gives them more work to do to continue the programming of the prison even when they're not there anyone think about this homework you can't quote educate people through most of the day 5 days a week at least for their entire formative years that kind of homework as well it's ridiculous i think there should be a mass refusal to do homework mass refusal unless people want to do it unless the kids say no i like homework i want to do it fair enough you want to do what you want otherwise 
Mass refusal to do it. It's nonsense. And it's nothing to do with education. It's to do with control. And in the USA, particularly, I mean, Texas, I rest my case. Have a look what's going on there. They're, they're imposing the will of the school on more and more um, of the child's time outside of school. And the idea is not to educate but simply to prepare the um, next generation to be the adult slaves of um, the coming years. And here's a classic. This is a quote from J.D. Rockefeller. Nice man. Very good to his mother. Never went home. Um, and he was the creator of the General Education Board in America in 1903. And of course, J.D. Rockefeller, he cared so much about children and cared so much about people. And this is what he said. I don't want a nation of thinkers. I want a nation of workers. A nation of obedient slaves. And you, you, you hear it all the time, don't you? Governments. Um, education should prepare children for the workplace. No, it shouldn't. Education should set free um, all the gifts that children have that, that don't include passing exams. What are exams? They're just tests to see how, how much of the programming you've downloaded. Nothing to do with intelligence. I worked with people in journalism years ago who had first-class degrees and all this stuff. Crikey! They could hardly tie their own shoelaces. Remembering facts and intelligence are not the same thing. But we're supposed to believe they are, so we will accept this crap called um, education. Preparing children for the workplace simply means turning children into unthinking, unquestioning, acquiescent cogs to replace the previous generation of cogs in the state machine. And um, this... Um, this is uh, going on more and more. You see, what they're doing, this extension of the school day is, of course, obviously part of it, is they are reducing and reducing and reducing the time that children and young people have to free think, to ponder, to let their mind wander where it wants to go to be creative in its true sense. They don't want people like that. Dangerous. And so they are focused in five-sense reality all day, often filling their minds full of total crap. Algebra. What's all that about? Well, you've got to get educated, get a job. <clears throat> Mr. Brown, you've, uh, you've come for this, um, this job today. Um, first question, um, what does X equal? Anybody ever had that question? Well, I don't know. Well, Mr. Brown, you're not really what we're looking for. It's all rubbish. But it's filling time and it's filling and blocking potential creativity with this tidal wave of irrelevant crap. Most of it called education. So children don't have mind chill time, me time. And, and even when they do now, from another angle, we have the addiction to smartphones. So when do, when, do, when, do, when do most children, young people now have real pondering chill time when they're not focused on something 
school, homework, smartphone. Um, and if anyone thinks that's a, just a coincidence, they're missing the point completely about what's really going on. And like I say, these, um, these schools are becoming dictatorships. Uh, the producer um, on the uh, Richie Allen radio show uh, was sent a letter, as were all the parents, to this particular school um, regarding something called safeguarding. I talked about that in previous um, video cast. Safeguarding children, safeguarding boards that Orwellian term they use. Um, and safeguarding is Orwellian speak for an excuse for more and more control to protect the children. Do you know, just round the corner from here, um, my children went to the school there. It had a little wall around it and people walked in and out and took their kids to school and it was not a problem. There was never any problem. There was never any danger. No threat to them. People just got on with it. It's a school. Go in the school, hello, morning, all that stuff. Now you want to see it. It not only um, is part of this prison system, it looks like a prison. Now, these schools look like prisons. It's got big, a big uh, prison-like fence around it. Uh, you, you go in one part, but then you can't go in the next part without going through another locked gate, just like they do in prisons. And it's a school for little kids. And um, this is um, the, the, the letter and it's, uh, this is just one thing it said. We now have one additional safety feature to bring into place. You see the excuse, safety, safety. You look at the, the thing about terrorism and then we must take your freedoms away to protect your freedoms from terrorists. It's the same theme in, in these buddy schools. And it says, if children are not in school for 8.55 a.m., not 8.56, outrageous, Minute late. If they're not in school for 8.55 a.m., the parent carer bringing them needs to report to the school office to enter a reason in a late report book. Thank you, it says, for helping us all to keep our children safe and strive to ensure children do not miss the important start to the day. Oh, my goodness me. Talk about the program, programming the next generation. And this letter also says, without parents' knowledge, that um, some bloke from the Healthy Eating Audit has been looking into their uh, lunch boxes and now has made a report on, 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 on what's in them. I mean, Pete, the... the, the um, the control and the influence um, is all going to the state from parents. Crazy. I mean, you, th you think about, you think about this sequence. It's called life in childhood. You come out of the womb and within a, what? This idiot I've just described, once once it started two years of age, but it's now, what, three, four, something like that? You have a few years with your parents, what, a few years, two or three years with your parents, who, who are also often passing on their programming because they've been through the same sequence you're about to go through. You then um, find yourself at the age of three or four, just come into the world, and now you're sitting at a desk with an authority figure for all your formative years from now on, telling you what's right and wrong, when you have to be there, 8.55, no later, when you can leave, what you must wear, what's right, what's wrong, when you can eat, like I say, when you can go to the toilet. And this is preparing you to become an acquiescent slave throughout your life in terms of acquiescence to authority. And so we're looking 
at the most blatant programming um, operation for our kids. And this is why they're doing everything they can, not only to extend the school day, but make sure that children don't have any, any chance of not being in that program day after day after day after day. That's why they're fining parents now. They're fining parents if their children are not at school. If they're taken away uh, on holiday because it's cheaper outside school time. They're fining parents. It's outrageous. And parents accept it. They might moan about it, but they accept it. Just as there should be a mass refusal to do homework for those that don't want to do it, there should be a mass refusal to pay these fines en masse. Keep children out of school, those who can, and, and, until it changes even. En masse, it has to be en masse. I mean, years ago, when, when, when my son Jamie was, was just a little boy, I, was on, I went on a speaking tour, a world speaking tour. I went, we took him out of school. And we took him to Canada. We took him to Hong Kong. We took him to Australia. We took him to South Africa, where he saw um, wildlife parks and, 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 and uh, animals that most people only read about in books, um, in, in their, uh, at least up to a point, their natural habitat. And the school was like, oh, he's, he's, got, he's going to miss out of being away from school for so. No, he's not. And no, he didn't. Oh, you mean he's going to miss out? So you know that book with all those pictures of lions and elephants and, and, and what have you? Yeah. So he's missed out by not reading that because he was actually there seeing them in the flesh. I left school at 15 when you could in those days. I'm old. Because I went to be um, a footballer. And I never took a uh, major exam in my life, let alone pass one. Thank you, God. And now he's a stream of books, uh, which I've been writing um, for the last 25 years. And not only did I do that, despite ignoring education, basically, But ignoring education made it easier because I had a, a mind that hadn't been programmed with a certain view of everything. Education, education, education is a myth. I'm all for education. But that's not what we had. And not only that, children are being prepared not only to accept acquiescence to authority, and download a certain perception of life, which they then, you know, repel all borders so often in terms of alternatives to the program and their beliefs and their perceptions. Not only that, but they're being prepared to accept an Orwellian state of technological control on a massive extreme scale. This is why they're putting more and more cameras in the schools. They're having um, uh, fingerprints to take um, library books out, biometrics and all this stuff. Oh, it's to protect the children. Oh, really? Well, what, why wasn't it ne ne necessary before? Just like the massive fences around the school around the corner weren't necessary before. Nothing to do with protecting children to do with preparing them to accept that this is how life is. Get the kids to be brought up with, with technological control everywhere, cameras everywhere, and they'll be far less likely to rebel against it when everywhere in the world, in their adult life, is the same. Like I said earlier, this is... Um, totally connected to the increasing control of children and the stealing of children from loving parents by the state social services. In Scotland now, um, they are introducing um, something called um, a named 
uh, a guardian, a state guardian. They're actually um, in the process of designating a state named guardian for every child until aged 18 years. Um, Overriding, because that's the idea, no matter what they tell you, overriding more um, influence and decision-making by parents. And this lady, uh, leader of the Scottish Nationalists, um, Nicola Sturgeon, um, who, of course, you know, wants independence for Scotland. I think that's great as well. But she wants to keep in the EU um, and she wants people to vote to stay in the EU in this referendum. And you can't have an independent anywhere that's in the tyranny that is the EU. So that contradiction in terms is, is ridiculous also. But she is um, arguing and has argued um, for these state designated guardians for children, a named person, they call them. And um, this is uh, from uh, one of the, the groups that are, uh, have been opposing it. Um, this is a state official, the named person, um, tasked with looking after a child's well-being, which is, of course, extremely subjective. That is their happiness. Well, what does that mean? No, no, you, you're not going to be on that smartphone every hour you're awake. Well, that's made me unhappy. I'm going to my guardian. This state guardian will be uh, put in place regardless of whether or not children or parents wish to have one and regardless of whether there is any need for state intervention. Now think of the Orwellian extremes here that are being sold, as always, with helping and protecting the children because we care so much. We're controlling their lives. Confusingly, there are already named person pilot schemes in operation across Scotland, but the legislation does not actually come into force until August 2016. Um, a government-funded leaflet said that um, the duties of the named person um, include having to check if children get a say in how their room is decorated and what they watch on TV. A named person will have the power to speak to a child, including about very personal issues, and provide information or advice, all without requiring parental consent. And so it goes on. It is absolutely outrageous. And if people can't see what that's about and where it's leading, well, my goodness me, I doubt they can see anything. We're having this situation where our children are being burned out. They're being uh, caused to have um, a, a childhood of stress, trying to meet expectations for these prison programming centres and parents that take their belief in their child's success or failure based on the prison programming centres. And this burning out where children actually commit suicide because of the pressure and fear of failure of um, exams is all planned. I quote you again from the Rockefeller Insider speaking in 1969. Education. Pressures of the accelerated academic program, the accelerated demands, these pressures um, will cause some students to burn out. Planned to do that. He said the smartest ones will learn how to cope with pressures and to survive. There will be some help available to students in handling stress, but the unfit won't be able to make it. They will then move on to other things. Um, in this connection, and later on in the connection with drug abuse and alcohol abuse, he indicated that psychiatric services to help would be increased dramatically. We're seeing this. More and more psychiatrists and psychiatric drugs for kids, even at the most ridiculously young ages. 
in all, the Pushing for Achievement programming on the state's um, say-so, it was recognised that many people would need help and the people worth keeping around would be able to accept and benefit from that help and still be super achievers. Those who could not would fall by the wayside and therefore were sort of dispensable, expendable, um, I guess is the word I want. This is what is happening to children every day. The parents say, see you later, pick you up after school. And it's so, it's so incessant and it's so all pervading that the teachers who are directly um, playing the part of child programmers think they're doing the best for the kids. If we don't address this and parents don't get together and address this en masse, then what's the next generation of adults going to be like in terms of free thought, questioning, the state's impositions. This is a massive, massively important topic and subject which needs to be addressed before it's too late.